Hi everyone, so today I wanted to kind of have a little bit of a departure from my usual format and talk about writing and breaking down prompts for VC comparative analysis. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I got this comment from Glaze Donut. Hi Joe, I just wanted to say that I'm really loving your videos and your thorough analysis and comparison is really helping me through year 12. I was wondering if you could email me an example essay as I'm struggling with writing using correct structure. So here's the thing with that comment, right? I have to say nafam to it, and the reason is because I have my own students, and I've got to get my coin to pay my rent, um, and I need to give my students value for their money. So if I'm going to cover what I cover with everyone else on here with my private students, then they're not really getting value for their money. So it's kind of a matter of fairness, right? But what I can do is provide an equal advantage. So I can't help you by sending you an email individually, but what I can do is make a video like this so that you get value out of it, but they do too. And then on top of that, they learn this content here outside of our tuition time so that when they have their private lesson with me, we can work on more important things because I have so much to teach and so little time to teach it. So first things first, when you want to write, um, you need to have a prompt to write about. Um, and then after this video, I'll probably do two more, one where I look at a good essay and one where I look at a bad essay. I'll go through the structure of the two and go through what's good and what's bad about them. Um, and so that will probably help out a lot on that front. The problem with a lot of the texts this year is that they're entirely new, so you probably won't find a lot of pre-written prompts. So you're going to have to write your own. Okay, or you've got a really good teacher who writes them for you, but you know, let's assume that you will need to write some of your own. So the first thing that you should be doing when writing prompts is looking at the study design. I am always shocked and appalled at the number of year 12s who don't read their own study design. Christine, I am shooketh. What? So if you look at everything that I have here for the key knowledge and the key skills for unit four area of study one, um, I've drawn a line between the important parts and the parts that are essentially just telling you to use correct spelling, grammar, and punctuation, and structure an essay correctly. Um, so everything above the lines is important and everything below the lines is not that important. So notice that I've highlighted ideas, issues, and themes, and I've also highlighted the words, the ways, features, the ways in which, and the choices. And the reason why I've highlighted these is because they are the kind of focus of this area of study. So feel free to pause here if you haven't read these yet and you want to have a closer look at them because I will be moving on. So the focus is always on how authors convey the ideas, themes, and issues of the texts. And in your prompts, they're going to be phrased in different ways. The first is the ways in which. Next is how do these two texts do blah, 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 blah. And then discuss how the features of these two texts blah, 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 blah. So those are the f those, that question, that key question of how the authors do what they do is the focus of this area of study. The so-called prefixes, you can think of them like that, for your prompts can be words like compare and contrast, or both the dressmaker and the crucible do so and so, or while the dressmaker does this and that, the crucible does that and this. Okay, so you'll end up with something along the lines of compare and contrast the ways in which the dressmaker and the crucible explore the theme of destruction. So we've got a theme, both the dressmaker and the crucible focus on victimized women, discuss what the texts demonstrate about the oppression of women. So we've got an issue, and then how do the dressmaker and the crucible show that insular societies are bound to destroy themselves? And that's an idea. So if you don't know what the difference between a theme, an issue, and an idea is, um, let me know in the comments and I'll probably make a separate video about them. It's really quite simple, but I find that a lot of teachers have a hard time explaining what the difference is. Now, these prompts are a trap, two of them at least. So I'm going to give you an example of a trap that Vika has said in the past. So in the past, Vika has done this thing where they said, in Euripides Medea, it is ultimately Medea who gains the audience's sympathy. Now, 
for those of you who don't know, Medea is about a woman who is cheated on by her husband. There's a lot more nuance to it than that, but basically she is exiled out of the city that she's living in because her husband's new bride is um, the princess of Corinth, the city that they're living in. Um, and she's basically facing political oppression, persecution, um, and we're led to feel really sorry for her. But then she kind of picks herself back up and decides to take revenge on her husband. So she kills her husband's new family-in-law, as well as her own children, and then flies away in a chariot drawn by dragons sent by her grandfather, who is coincidentally the god of the sun. So there's a lot to unpack there. But a lot of kids just said, Oh, you guys, it's Medea who gains the audience's sympathy. We're supposed to feel bad for her. Euripides makes us, like, really sympathize with her and stuff. But, like, the goop and the gag is that English is a drag, and it was a trap. So, look at the word here that I've put in bold. In Euripides is Medea, it is ultimately Medea who gains the audience's sympathy. So, Medea, in the beginning, was someone who we felt sympathetic towards, but towards the end, our our sympathy for her is tinged with disgust. It's steeped in mistrust and disbelief and incredulousness towards her actions. So now look at the traps that I've set for you guys. If you guys didn't pick these up, um, we'll talk about why that is and we'll talk about how it should be remedied. So the second prompt was both the dressmaker and the crucible focus on victimized women. Discuss what these texts demonstrate about the oppression of women. I didn't say that the texts are about victimized women. I said they focus on victimized women. And here's the thing. If you talked about Abigail as a victimized woman in your essay without acknowledging that it doesn't focus on her and her victimization, then you have done something very wrong, you haven't addressed the topic. And remember, these are just prompts that I've written off the top of my head typing up this PowerPoint in a bit of a rush because I wanted to get this uploaded tonight, right? Like, the exam writing committee has an entire year to trip you up, so think about that. Um, and my third prompt, how do the dressmaker and the crucible show that insular communities are bound to destroy themselves? So, um, I would ask, are they bound to destroy themselves because they're insular, or is there something more sinister going on that's merely exacerbated by the insulation of their community? So think about what the question is asking and what the implications are. So if you don't think about those things, you fall into a trap and you won't fully answer the question. You fell victim to one of the classic blunders! The most... And that's kind of like one of the cardinal sins of VC English, like you will lose hella marks for doing that ish. Okay, so if you didn't pick that up, there's actually a reason for it and I'm gonna teach you how to fix it. The reason is because you were looking for keywords. You were saying these words are important, I need to focus on them and get this essay smashed out. But the key is actually to remember that there's no such thing as a keyword. You see what I did there? The key, keyword? Anyway, so um, often the most unassuming words are the ones that you need to look out for. So the questions took the examination committee a whole ass year to write. Every single word is there for a reason. They chose every single word and said, okay, this one fits here. How can we add to this question? How can we take away from this question? Is this question too easy, too complex? Every word is there for a reason, right? So, that is all there is for writing and breaking down prompts. So, I've given you three prompts today. I'll probably choose one of them and start writing on them for the next two videos because I'm going to do a series of three videos um, where I teach you how to write prompts and then um, I'll be giving an example of a good essay, a bad essay, and um, basically break them down and tell you what's good and what's bad about them. So uh, we will be doing that, but for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I hope you guys learned something.